What's going on guys, it's your average consumer. And it is finally time to take a look at these guys over here, Apple's brand new AirPods Max. Now, this has been the talk of the internet for a while now. These are $550 headphones and everyone is wondering, is it worth the price? So today I'm gonna to be telling you guys everything you need to know about these headphones, how well they work, their quirks, and uh, let you guys know whether or not I think you should pick them up. These are a pair of active noise canceling Bluetooth headphones that Apple has made. The rumors have been swirling around forever uh, and we finally have them here. No one expected them to be in the $500 price range. I'm sure most people expect expensive headphones that consumers would buy to be around the $300 price point. But Apple went quite a bit above that, but they put quite a bit of technology in here as well. So let's see if it's worth it, right? So we have a pair of solid Bluetooth headphones made out of some really awesome materials. So we've got aluminum ear cups, metal band with this soft material covering it at the top with this mesh that you can find all over. Uh, you find mesh on the ear cups as well as the headband which is pretty interesting. I've never seen a headband with just straight up mesh material as the actual uh, base of it. It's an interesting choice by Apple, uh, but does it lead to a comfortable experience? I'd say so. And it's actually interesting because these have a pretty decent clamping force. And what I mean by that is that these will, you know, sit snugly on your ears, uh, but thankfully they're over ear headphones. So they're not gonna put any pressure on the ears themselves. And this material actually is pretty breathable. So you're not gonna get that ear fatigue or listening fatigue when you're wearing these for a long period of time. You know, they've got cool features like active noise canceling and a transparency mode. Transparency mode lets you hear things going on around you. And we'll talk more about that in a bit, but I've been able to just wear these with transparency mode on for extended periods of time. Just throw it in transparency mode and I'm going about my day with these on my head not even listening to music. Whenever I wanna to listen to something, it's already on my head. I do think Apple did a pretty good job, even though it has the clamping force that it does, so it has a nice snug fit. You can see that it's, the ear cups are actually quite movable. So it's not like one stiff position that locks onto your head. It kind of conforms to the shape of your head no matter how you're wearing it. And it's kind of nice that you can adjust these headphones the size of them by just, you know, bringing them out, bringing them down, bringing them in. And they do a really good job at staying in place. So if I bring it up like this, no matter how much I move it, it's not budging. So these have some really nice solid hinges. So once you find that perfect spot, you don't have to keep doing these like micro adjustments. You, it'll just stay in place, which is nice. Now I've seen a lot of people complain about the weight of these saying that they're pretty heavy. This is substantially heavier than a lot of headphones out there right now, but still I feel like Apple has done a pretty good job in terms of like the headband, the ear cups, that it's not much of a problem. You don't really feel that weight unless you're trying to do something like, I don't know, jog or some kind of physical activity, which I would not recommend for these since they are not like sweat or water resistant. These are made for a less active listening experience if you're just like sitting down walking in the street, something like that, but you're not gonna wanna jog with these or anything. So material wise, Apple went the premium route with these headphones. Nothing feels cheap about them at all, uh, but the design choices, I don't know, guys. What do you think about the design? Jay, what do you think? You think these look good? You think they're fashionable? Not really. And I I'll agree. These aren't the best looking headphones from just like, a design perspective, functional, absolutely. Are they well made? Are the hinges well made? For sure. I'd give these a solid seven out of 10 in terms of like the design. Jay, out of 10, what would you rate these? Six. Six, mm. okay, there you have it, folks. <laughs> it got a 6.5 between the UAC filming team right now. But, but when you switch to different ear cups, like different colors, it adds one to it. Okay, yeah. so one thing about these headphones is that you can purchase uh, different ear cups. So these ear cups are removable, which is kind of cool, you know, in case you need to swap them out or something, maybe it gets damaged or really dirty, I don't know. But if you need to replace it, these are removable. They're kept together by magnets, but it also leaves you the option to also switch it up a bit. If you want to pop off some ear cups from a different color, you can throw it on there, mix and match, you know, pick what works for you. Now, these ear cups, go for about 70 bucks. So 
it's pretty expensive. I, I don't know why you would spend 70 bucks on this. If you, the, a combination like this alone, this combo right here, guys, goes for over $600. But I will say it is pretty interesting that that's even an option. You don't typically see that when it comes to headphones. Typically, if you mess up the ear cushions, you gotta go figure out what you can do with your warranty. It's at least nice that Apple has an option, but it is really, really expensive. Now, while we're on the subject of like little accessories, like the ear cups, we gotta talk about the case. So this is the travel case that it comes with. You throw them in into like these little sleeves. They use magnets to get closed. And then when they're in here, they actually go into a low power mode. So they don't consume a bunch of battery while you're in this case. And I'm not the first to say it, but this is a pretty bad case. Zero. Zero out of 10. <laughs> you know what, Jay? I, I agree with you. The case is a zero out of 10. There's nothing nice about this case. Well, there's one nice thing about the case. I really do like the material that it's made out of. The material feels nice, it's nice to the touch, but that's about it. It doesn't offer the kind of protection I would like on a pair of headphones. I'm used to headphones having a hard shell case, something like this, where the headphones sit inside of the case, they're well protected. We don't have the Sonys in here right now uh, because you do have these metal pieces. I don't know if over time these are gonna get scratches, but this material I feel like will definitely get wear over time. I can see these not holding up if these are like your go-to everyday headphones. You can also see that the ear cups are also kind of exposed. Uh, the ear cushions are exposed as well. The lightning port isn't aligned that well. It's not what you come to expect from Apple. This this feels so incomplete. Uh, people also make fun of the fact that this is like kind of how you walk around with it. But the case does put it into a low power mode whenever it's inside of it so that it's not draining battery. And that's because as you can see up here, there is no power button. Well, you probably, if you don't know the AirPods Pro Max, you don't know what these buttons are, but none of these are a power button. It's something that people are used to using. I get the convenience of just having a headphone that's always just ready to go. But I really feel like there's no harm in having that option. I mean, right here, we have your active noise canceling button as well as your transparency mode button. So you can toggle between the two by just pressing this. Even if they made this same button, like a long press to shut off the headphones, that'd be awesome. Uh, but we don't have that option here. Now, when it comes to my experience with not having a power button, it's just been a little bit weird. Battery life for me has been, for the most part, pretty good. These are rated to have 20 hours of battery life. And uh, some people have experienced longer listening times than that. I've had a lot of problems when it comes to like just standby. So I'm not somebody who's going to rush and throw these inside of the case as soon as I'm done using it. I might have it like just chilling right there one day. Uh, one thing about these is that they will detect whether or not you are using them. And a lot of times when, that, when I'm not using them, I kind of bump into them or something. They'll detect some kind of motion and then I'll see it pop up on my phone as it just connected. Now, when that kind of thing happens, it's using a little bit more juice, it's connected to the phone, and sometimes I'll come back to the headphone and notice that a huge chunk of the battery life has gone down a bit, and I wasn't even really using them. I think you, if you don't put it in the case in about two hours, it'll go into that low power mode where it's not using a lot of battery life, but even that is a little bit too long. I'm used to most headphones doing that after a few minutes. I think 10 minutes or so would be more appropriate than two hours, that's a long time. But with the issues from my experience aside, when it comes to straight up listening, you will get a really long battery life. Now this does have a lightning port so that you can charge it up. Uh, one thing that's cool is that with five minutes of charging, you get an hour and a half of battery life. So if you wanna take this on your commute to or from, from work and they're dead, a quick five minute charge, will get you at least an hour and a half, which is pretty solid for uh, any kind of commute. But I do love the fact that these have the sensors in the back of the ear cups to detect when they're on and off your head. So once you take them off, it'll pause your music. And when you put them on, it can play them again. You also have access to controls of the music right here with the crown. So this is similar to what we've seen with the Apple Watch. So this little dial that you have over here, you have a very, very similar one right here so you can control your volume and it gives you like these nice little clicks to let you know that you're moving it. You can hear it inside of the ear cups. You can play and pause by pressing it, double tap to go forward a song, triple tap to go back. So we talked a lot about the physical aspect of these headphones, but how do they perform? 
Now, let's talk about active noise canceling. So Apple has said that this has industry leading active noise canceling. And a lot of us know the Sony WH-1000X Mark IVs have been the king of active noise canceling when it comes to Bluetooth headphones for a while now, or even the previous models of those that headphone. It's been the champ. Now, Apple has made this claim and does it hold up? I gotta say, it's a tough question to answer. I think it re really does a good job. Now, when it comes to listening to music with active noise canceling or listening to anything with active noise canceling on, these and the Mark IVs, amazing job. You're not gonna hear anything else. You're gonna hear what you're listening to. You can't even compare them. They both work perfectly. Now, the real difference is when you're not listening to anything, and I don't know how many people, you know, use it to just block out ambient sounds around them, uh, but if that's what you care about, I feel like sometimes this does a better job. Uh, Jay feels like sometimes the Sony does a better job. So it's kind of hard to say one is better than the other. They're both so close to me that I feel like they're sharing the crown at this point. They both do a really good job. Uh, but when it comes to just like the AirPods Max themselves, man, I am in a room at night whenever I put down Austin for bed. We've got some white noise going in the background and a little bit of music to help him go to sleep. So when I throw these on, Oh man, a world of difference. And I just gotta give it to Apple for their first foray into the active noise canceling headphone realm. They came out swinging. This is a really, really good job by them. Uh, now that is possible thanks to the H1 chip that is inside both of these ear cups. Uh, it helps a lot of things happen like computational audio, adaptive EQ, and adaptive EQ basically, it is taking into account your head shape, and like all these different things to make sure you get the optimal listening experience. But that begs the question, how do these sound, right? They're legit. So vocals, oh, super, super clean. Uh, I've been throwing all kinds of stuff at it um, from really high pitch stuff like Ariana Grande, Don't Judge Me, if you know, she can get really high on that Mariah Carey kind of level. Doesn't sound tinny at all. It just sounds super clean and crisp, but it also handles the low end really well. Low end being like the bass and that kind of thing. Uh, I, I'm a big bass guy. I love thumping bass. I love to hear it. Uh, these do a really good job of producing a nice solid bass that you can feel. Apple's made some material choices that allow the distortion levels to be under 1% no matter what volume you have these at. So even at 100%, where you hear the sound starts to get really weird and muffled and it just doesn't sound too good, even at 100%, these sound phenomenal. And these have a really good sound stage. And what sound stage is, is basically it allows you to feel like the instruments are in different spots. It allows you to feel some separation between the instruments. It's not all just one big sound coming at you, you can hear like a trumpet going over here, drum somewhere else. And it's kind of crazy to think about because in some of those sessions at night with Austin while I'm putting him down for bed, white noise going, I got the active noise canceling on, I'm listening to music and I'm hearing certain things in songs. It's like, oh snap, I didn't hear that before. Beats by Dre used to talk about that stuff all the time. Like you start hearing things you never heard before. And I'm not surprised that the audio quality sounds great here to me. AirPods Pro sounded great. HomePod sounded great. HomePod Mini sounds great. Apple really knows what they're doing when it comes to audio quality. Uh, they've proven it time and time again that they can produce some really awesome sound. And on a bigger pair of headphones like these, uh, it is not surprising that these sound great as well. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is just like the software experience. So a lot of the same things that we get from something like the AirPods Pro, uh, you'll get with this as well. So I'm talking about spatial audio, that's like a special feature where you're watching something, whatever's in front of you, you can move your head around and this thing has accelerometers and gyroscopes to kind of allow you to move your head and the audio stays in front of you. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it's fun, it's really cool and it's fun to have people try it out too. And because these have the H1 chips built inside of them, they have the ability to use automatic switching with your different Apple devices. So when you have the H1 chip, Basically all of your devices have the ability to pair really quickly with the headphones as well as like your AirPods, that kind of stuff. But with automatic switching, you can go from using these with like your iMac and then when someone gives you a call, you can go ahead and easily switch right over to that call without having to 
press any special buttons. It all just transfers pretty quickly, which is really nice. And then once you're done with your call, you can go back to whatever you're doing on your iMac, the music or audio will play directly from there. And that's one of those benefits that you get from being in the Apple ecosystem, I guess. Now I did experience certain things that weren't so great. Like sometimes they just kind of disconnect and then take a couple of seconds to reconnect. Really weird. Or sometimes one ear cup would just go blank and then the whole thing reconnects again. I'm sure there are a few bugs that maybe need to be worked out. It's done it a few times on me, which makes it worth talking about in this video. But I will say you guys, overall, my experience with the AirPods Max has been pretty amazing. Now, do I think people should pick these up? It's a bit of a tough question to answer. If it's within your budget and you're in the Apple ecosystem and you're fine paying $500, $550, I think you're gonna get your money's worth. I've had people try these on. Ari has tried them on. I've had her sister try them on and Every single time, people have been blown away by the audio quality. And these are, listen, it doesn't get more average than Ari and her sister when it comes to like listening to music from headphones. They don't, they don't care. But they immediately could tell how good these sounded in their ears. But that about wraps it up for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you got a good understanding of where I think the AirPods Pro... They're not the AirPods Pro Max. I think a lot of people have that issue where they keep saying AirPods Pro Max. I think a lot of people will enjoy the AirPods Max. They sound phenomenal. They do exactly what they're supposed to and they do it well. It all comes down to your budget. But that about wraps it up for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you picked up the new AirPods Pro, AirPods Max, let me know which color you got with a comment down below. This is one of the cleanest options out there right now, but I don't think the blue looks that bad either. I think the blue looks pretty solid. Jay, which one? Black one. Black one, of course. <laughs> but till next video, guys, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, be the cool guy girl that gives it a thumbs up. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Till then, it's your average consumer. Peace. Back on they go. <laughs>